Why, hello, my friends. Welcome back. Uh, so I am so happy that you are joining me today for some finger symbol drills and improvisational dancing. So uh, finger symbols are one of my favorite uh, belly dancer props. They're so much fun. Um, I'm so glad that people still use them. They were extremely popular in American style belly dance back in the 1970s. And uh, it seems like as the modern trend has leaned towards uh, Egyptian style dance and different factors, in some groups they have uh, lessened in popularity and you don't see people play them as much. But thankfully there are a lot of different dance groups, some fusion groups or some classic groups that still use them. So we're going to have some fun with them today. I um, have been studying with the Salampur School of Dance for several years, and I'm very fortunate in that they really highly emphasize the use of finger symbols, even right at the very beginning. So um, they also are very open with finger symbol technique. Not only do we learn a lot of different cultural and folkloric styles, uh, such as working with the Mas Moody beat, working with uh, the Kashmala, the Chiftatelli, these things. We also just learn beats as a drummer would. And I find that a lot of belly dancers, myself included, were taught more... Um, in patterns of threes, and that was pretty much it. We would play uh, one, two, three type patterns such as this. And, you know, maybe faster or slower, but that was pretty much the extent of our finger symbol education, which not putting that down, that's amazing. If you can carry a steady three or a three, one, three, these types of abilities while you know, executing your moves, that's great. But there's a lot of other patterns out there. And so today we're going to deviate away from the threes pattern and work on a fives pattern. Um, a five, I'm calling it five, five, seven, five pattern. So it's a little more intermediate, but it's a lot of fun. So I will talk you through it and play it. We'll play it a little bit together right here with no music. And then I'm going to turn on some music and we'll just kind of improv. I'll be giving you some suggestions as far as body movements, but it's really up to you what you feel comfortable with. If you're a little more new to finger symbols and you want to focus on that rhythm, that 5-5-7-5 five, five, five rhythm, that is completely fine. You can always just take a seat. Even sometimes when you're seated, you can sometimes, once you start to get that pattern, maybe add a little undulation or a little arm. I definitely uh, recommend that you go at a pace that's comfortable for you. Um, with the 5.5.7.5, five, 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 we will be employing just a little bit of syncopation as well. That end part, the 7.5, is what we call a running 7 into 5. So just bear with me for a moment. It's basically like singles to the end. So what our pattern will sound like will go like this, and I'm going to hold it up to my mic so you can hear it. It's it's going to go, let me speak it first. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Here we go. Again. One more time. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. You can try this with me. Right? So, and you may choose. Um, I am alternating right and left. I'm not doing any like one, two, three, or, you know, anything like that. I've sometimes seen that uh, in the Salampur school. They're very adamant about you want to work towards not being too right hand dominant. 
so sometimes we would start doing that, those alternations with the right, and then she'd be like, all right, switch it starting with the left. So I advise you to find what's most comfortable. If you start getting comfy with the move and you're doing it starting on the right hand, maybe try starting on the left. So uh, one more word before I put the music on. I will be not be talking during uh, the section where we'll be playing because I want you to be able to hear the music and hear the symbols if possible. Sometimes <laughs> with the medium online, it's hard to get vocals, uh, symbols, music, all of these things at once. So we'll just kind of flow through that, that drill so you can hear that music. Um, moves, again, as I mentioned, feel free to do what works for you. Uh, but I'll be doing probably a lot of undulations, up to down or down to up. You can do those. Maybe some nice snaky hip moves. Maybe even some shimmies. So uh, a word about improv. And you're at home, so I just encourage you to just feel free and comfortable doing whatever feels right to you. There's no right or wrong. There's no judgment. But um, it's also really good for us to just kind of follow the leader sometimes. The old style of teaching, we're very fortunate in our modern day in that a lot of teachers are very qualified and educated and they work really hard to break things down step by step. In a lot of the old style of teaching, both in 1970s America and also if you work with a, an Egyptian teacher, let's say, is just quite literally follow the leader. Fun story, I uh, studied once with Dina, a big star in Egypt, and now granted there was a language barrier, but nonetheless, her style of teaching was quite literally turning on music. She'd tell us all to sit down and then she'd do an entire dance in its entirely and then be like, get up, now you do. And that's how she, she talks. So uh, I'm not saying that's a great way to learn, but it's important for us sometimes to just learn to kind of watch people and do what they do. So have some fun. I'm going to crank on the music, put on your finger symbols, and we'll get started. 5575. Five, enjoy.